Hello, Make Boise Better fans. Time for another analysis video. This time, um, we're going to be talking about voting. This was our, our survey for this week, and it's timely because we're leading up to um, the midterm elections on November 6th, I believe. So a couple weeks away, things are heating up. Um, so first of all, per usual, going to do a quick overview of Make Boise Better. Make Boise Better is the easiest way to be a part of local solutions. This is a new way to make your, your voice heard and make a difference and help make your community better, and that's important. We all have a responsibility to, to contribute, even in a small way, um, to make our communities better, I believe. Um, and I think a lot, of, a lot of people do too. So this is the easiest way, and this is, this is the way that if you're gonna do anything, you should do this. We send short weekly surveys that take two or three minutes to complete, we provide public results um, on Thursdays in an email and, and analysis showing kind of what we found in the survey. You can see it for yourself. And here's what, here are the takeaways in the kind of more advanced analysis of that data, what we're seeing. Let's get this a little bigger. There we go. All right. So if you want to do your part and contribute, click this do your part button join our email list and you'll you'll start getting survey invitations and results. All right, voting survey. All of our survey pages have all the results on or the, all the resources on them. Here's the link to see all the questions, how we ask them. Here's the link to see the overall results, um, how those things broke down. Nothing's individualized, everything's overall. Um, and then the analysis link is here. Um, and then if we, if we do, are able to do an expert interview with somebody on the topic, that'll be here too. All right, let's get in it. So, voting analysis. Um, also, anal how analysis posts work. We take those overall results that everybody can see, and then we provide the views that not everybody can see. And not all of them, because you can split data in an infinite number of ways, essentially. Um, but the, the views that only I can do um, that can really show um, important patterns and trends across different groups using segmentation. So before we get into it, let's talk about um, our respondents, the demographics involved here. So we heard from more women than men, heard from more young people than older people, um, there's a pretty big group in both these categories of unattributed responses. What that means is um, the people that answered this survey, some of them didn't answer the survey um, where we asked this before. So we don't have that for them yet. Um, if they're new, they'll probably be getting that and maybe we can pull that, that information in later, potentially. Um, we heard from a lot more liberals than conservatives. And this is a new one from this survey, your interest in politics. Um, I thought this was valuable to show at the beginning. Most of the people that we're, we heard from in this survey are pretty interested in politics. Got some that aren't interested and we can show their, their views, but um, we mostly heard from people that are. All right. First headline, Republicans and older folks say they vote more often. Okay, well here's the overall result of the question we asked. It was like, how often do you do the below things in major elections like this November? Um, vote, donate to a campaign, volunteer for a campaign, or put out a campaign sign. Um, so this was weighted on like a four point scale, and this is almost a four, so that means most of our respondents answered always vote. Um, but then a much lower group, probably about a quarter of them are in these other categories, donating, volunteering, and putting out a campaign sign. So let's dig more into that voting. Um, let's break that down by, by some other questions. So with this one, how about by party leaning? So we asked a question, Essentially, at this point in time, do you lean more towards the Republican Party, Democratic Party, or neither? Um, so, 
we could see how Democrats responded to this question, how regularly they vote, whether it's never or always or something in between. Same thing for Republicans and same thing for neither. The interesting thing here was that all of the Republicans we heard from, and there weren't a ton of them, so keep that in mind, but all of them said always. Now, the Democrats, you know, the majority of them said always as well, though not all of them. Some of them said usually, and one said one or, one or two said sometimes. Um, that's actually, even though we didn't hear from a lot of Republicans, that actually kind of jives with other research that I've seen lately, that Republicans usually come out, like turn out um, at, a, at higher rates than Democrats do. And then we've got the neithers, which are kind of respond at the lowest rate um, for always voting. Guessing that's because they're more frustrated than others potentially about the available candidates. So maybe that makes them feel like, eh, I don't care, it's not worth it. There's nobody that I really like. All right, what about another slice? Let's do it by age. Okay, so we had the, those question marks, people that we don't know how old they are, they're over here in their own bucket. Um, and then we have the 20s and 30s, both of them we had a lot of respondents from, or responses from. I grouped everybody 40 and older into one. The reason for that is because the big, if we had buckets for all the different decades um, with, with a lot fewer people in each of them, it would be probably more noisy and, and less reliable. Um, and actually they vote the, they respond to these pretty similarly. So that was definitely a, a fair uh, bucketing, putting them together. Whether though, if you're, if you're, in your 40s and are unhappy that you got link, um, grouped in with people in their 70s, well, too bad, sorry. Um, okay, so the big standout on this chart, I think, is this always category. How it goes from in your 20s, 60% of the respondents said they always vote. In their 30s, we're up to closer to 90% say they always vote. And then if you're in your 40 plus, we're talking over like 90, probably 95% that are saying they always vote. So that is also um, kind of backed up by research that I've seen lately that, that um, younger voters don't turn out as much as, as older voters typically. Um, I've got links to those research that I'm talking about here, by the way. Okay, next thing we're gonna look into how important is voting based on the different type of types of offices? So how important is it to, um, and maybe I'll pull up some of the, the overall results so you can see it here. So how important is it to vote for um, in local elections versus county versus state versus national? Um, that's down right here. Okay, so these, are pretty close together with their weighted averages. Um, and it looks like state offices kind of have the edge, but like I wanted to dig, dig more into that and see if there was anything interesting to, to, of note. So first thing I, I, I looked at was um, by age again. So how did the different age groups kind of say that how local, county, state, national compared? Um, in importance, and this is a rate that's showing like what percent of them said extremely important. So what's interesting to me here is there's this county dip. The headline up here is voting for county offices less important, question mark. Look at this, so in 20s, local elections are high, then county dips, then states higher, and then nationals a little higher than county. Um, for 30s, it's locals high, county drops, states higher, back down and for national. Same thing for 40 plus, locals high, county drops, states higher. So what's up with this county thing? Um, we actually had a, had a, um, comment below that was kind of talking about how how important county elections are and how how 
much like people know less about them and, and kind of really underestimate them and, and their influence. So that seems to be playing out here. Um, next, let's look at that party view again. What stands out to me here is Republicans, like this is like in a more extreme view of what we were just talking about, this dip from county, from local to county, back up on state. Why do the Republicans think that county um, offices are so much less important? I don't know. I don't even have a guess. Um, maybe it's because they're just so typically dominated by Republicans. They don't think about it as much. I don't know. This neither group is also interesting because as we talked about, there's usually local is high, then county is lower, then state's high again. It's not the same here. It goes local's high, county's lower, state's about the same, national's lower. So this is actually kind of what I was expecting to see from all across the board, this kind of um, phenomenon of like the more local, the more important the closer that the government is to you and your life and um, making decisions that impact your day to day, the more important it is to vote in those elections. And that seems to, that interpretation seems to be appropriate for these neither political party leaners, um, but not for the other folks. So uh, that's interesting. Okay, what about your interest in politics, how that compares to how important you think different offices voting for different um, races are. Um, this seems like the best one. So if you are very interested or extremely interested um, in politics, you're gonna rate kind of all the elections high, highly. We've got this county dip phenomenon again. Um, if you are think it's you're somewhat interested in politics or less not interested, you're a lot less likely to answer extremely important for for the the different races, the races uh, or the the elections. Um, so I'll caveat it that I am using the extremely important answer as kind of my my focus in this these charts. Perhaps people that are not interested are still think things are important, but they like use, they understate it a little bit more than the other folks. Like maybe they think it's important, but they're more likely to say very important than extremely important. Um, okay, we asked another two questions were, how informed are you um, about the, the candidates? and how decided are you about who you would vote for? So I was curious to, to overlap those to see, do people get more decided as they get more informed? Or are some people going to say, I'm really decided, but I'm not very informed. So basically outing themselves as, I am, I'm gonna vote without really knowing who or why I'm voting for them. Um, so that didn't really show in the data. However, people probably don't want to think that they don't have reasons for who they're voting for. I would guess that res survey respondents would want to kind of overstate their informedness. Um, whether they've actually done any research or not, they might want to say that they're informed. So um, maybe this is less, maybe this chart is less, um, baked or reliable. But anyway, um, this is also maybe the grays, but not. maybe the gray doesn't look, work as well for this chart. But anyway, the completely decided group definitely goes up. There's no completely decided um, respondents in the not at all informed or not so informed group. Um, and then from somewhat informed to extremely informed, that just increases as you go. So that to me says, the more informed you are, the more decided you are. Okay, here's a fun one. Headline is get off my lawn, not appreciating door knocking. Um, so one question we asked was, do you appreciate it when a political campaign knocks on your door? Um, and this was actually really spread out. People had, a lot of people um, 
did appreciate it. A lot of people didn't appreciate it. I'd say the average kind of was somewhere closer to not appreciating. Here you go. So the not so appreciative group, I'd say like the average would be in this not so appreciative. So I wanted to see which people are less, less appreciative. Um, and um, so I, I pulled out age at first. I expected to see the 40 plus people being less appreciative. There's that stereotype, older people um, yelling at kids to get off their lawn and being grumpy and stuff like that. Um, so if that, if you think that there's anything to that stereotype, maybe this, maybe you would expect this 40 plus group to be higher. Um, but actually it's the twenties, people in their twenties that, uh, that don't appreciate the door knocking the most. So we're up at like, uh, 70 some percent that said they don't appreciate it. Um, um, yeah, well, it sucks to get pulled away from your video games. Um, so, and they're probably on their phones and it's not fun to get distracted in either scenario. So I get it. Um, okay. What about interest in politics again? This seems to be like the ticket here. The best way to kind of separate these the percent from the group that said they don't appreciate door knockers. 100% of the people that said they're not interested in, at all interested in politics or not so interested in politics said they don't appreciate it. And then we're as low as like 20 some percent, low twenties that are extremely, um, that are very like extremely interested in politics that don't appreciate door knockers. So makes sense. People that don't, aren't interested in politics don't wanna talk about it. So leave them alone is what they would want maybe. Okay, next we ask kind of what would be the best improvements to voting? So I gave these, I gave these five options, more parties to choose from. Um, you can vote online, you can do rank voting. So not just choosing one, but kind of ordering them how, with your preference. Um, closer voting locations or mandatory voting. And the overall view here definitely favors more parties to choose from. But I wanted to break this down. Oops. Um, so I broke it down by interest in politics again, since we've been talking about that. It's interesting to kind of see how potentially interest in politics affects your ranking of these things. So pretty much these groups, um, the ordering isn't really different for you um, based on how interested in politics you are, but the degree to which they are kind of, you know, are they ranked way higher or way lower can be different. So I thought the most interesting standout here was this rank voting uh, one. Unlike the other ones that are kind of up and down, this one looks like kind of linear. So you, you rank it higher, meaning it has a lower number so, so this, the smaller the bar, the, the higher you ranked it, you prioritized it as like your number one, for instance, this would be the number one versus not. Um, so I'm seeing kind of a trend here of like, the more interested you are in politics, the, uh, the, the higher, the more likely you are to rank rank voting higher. Makes sense, it's kind of a wonky discussion. Um, Maybe not everybody knows what that is, but that's, that was interesting. Um, let's do it by parties again. One that stands out to me is the neither party leaners. Um, definitely want more parties to choose from more than Democrats and Republicans do, though that they also want that more uh, than the other things. So that totally makes sense because they don't really often have a lot of candidates that they're happy about. Um, yeah. All right. That's gonna, that's it for charts. Um, now we're going into comments. I do have some word clouds this week. Unlike before, this is a new thing. So what things get paid too much attention to? This can help us see some themes, party, 
Um, people's also um, big, a lot of people saying, don't just vote on party lines, do your research, check out what these people really think and have vote, you know, their voting record, what they stand for, but also don't get too like focused on what they're like as a person. Um, you know, don't just vote for people that you like. Um, think about what's be best for like um, society and communities. So anyways, I've, uh, I've highlighted, I've bolded phrases that I think were, are, um, can help you skim which comments are most interesting or most uh, relevant, excuse me. Um, what doesn't get enough attention? Um, these are the words that stuck out, um, same sort of themes, um, but I en encourage you to check out some of these um, comments. I learned a lot from these comments, they're, they're, they're good as always. Um, yeah, and that's it. So hopefully you like this analysis. If you wanna check out some of our other recent analysis, click this link. Um, and if you can, please subscribe um, and take our surveys. And if you wanna share it with people that you think would be interested in it, that'd be great, that would really help. So stay tuned for next week. We're gonna do a survey about debt.